Hey, Jim. Mr. President. Oh, that feels good. Conversation, asking people around the world what will it take. I'd also like to welcome the global audience that are watching us here, watching us on worldbank.org and also uh, with one.org in English, French, and Arabic. And the Education access, especially in countries that are less developed. Less greed. Justice. <laughs> what does it take? Strong and powerful women. Like teamwork and uh, passion from the bottom of your heart. To help people help themselves. Stop buying weapons and stop supporting dictators. We need to uh, find wisdom, experience and uh, passion for uh, ending poverty from all over the world. I said we need a collective effort based on trust and passion. And for us, we have a more effective World Bank that can deliver results. But you also see that these are not new issues. I want you to know, here today, the reason that they're uh, uh, so excited to be here is not necessarily because you're a rock star. It's because they have passion to end poverty. Uh, I definitely think that we can find a path toward ending poverty much sooner than uh, it's now being predicted to end, which is 20 to 25 years. We have to do it sooner than that. I think we can't have this. Let me pick up yeah. what you said. We can do better before 2015. What is the single biggest obstacle? What is it? I think if you want to know what will turbocharge yes. um, the fight against extreme poverty, it is open data and transparency. And everybody here knows that the biggest killer of them all, biggest killer of them all, biggest, bigger killer than, than AIDS, TB, malaria, probably the lot together, is corruption. And, and it's... <clears throat> It's not just corruption south of the equator, it's corrupt ideas north of the equator and, some, uh, north of the equator, and sometimes corrupt, cor actual corruption north of the equator. And on the issue of corruption, again, I think Bob said it best, corruption is simply stealing from the poor. And so we've, we've uh, uh, in every setting, uh, you know, we've now refused to give uh, direct uh, budget support to countries that don't publish their budgets. There's so much pain. Um, coming from the economic downturn and recession and this fiscal cliff, which is why I'm in town, because there's real jeopardy, you know, this sequestration, should it happen, you know, it costs, I think it's 8.2 percent, it just lobs off the whole top of everything, so that's about two billion of uh, the programs that we care, that's probably, you know, 275,000 kind of order of of people whose programs will be cut, maybe 65,000 deaths. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Deaths. And, and the, ex the three extremes is this unholy trio of extreme poverty, extreme ideology, and extreme climate. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they make a very difficult uh, weave, very strong and very hard to break. And we have to uh, um, uh, accept that, that, uh, that, that climate change or the climate crisis, as some call it, it, could undo a lot of the work we do in development. We've got to move quickly to try to find a way of, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting it in people's heads that that's the world at two or four degrees is going to look so different. And it's not, it's not three generations ahead. It's, I have a three-year-old son. When he's my age, he could be living in a completely different world. And, and right now, um, uh, I don't see the, the, the roots of that movement yet taking shape. I never thought I would say this. And my father was alive. It would make him smile. I want to go work for the bank. <laughs> <laughs>